Welcome to another episode of RootCon Unlimited. I'm James, and today we're drilling into the hardtop so that we can install a Rhino Rack backbone system. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this system and why I went with it. So this is the Rhino Rack backbone system and I chose to get it with the wing bars. This is actually called a vortex bar and the reason why I went with this is because I needed to increase my carrying capacity for the roof rack. I previously had a Thule uh, wing bar system and I did like it but it clamped onto the rain gutters of the Jeep. Now, it's not the best solution if you have to carry something heavy because it only carries about 150 pounds. This Rhino Rack here will actually give you 800 pounds of carrying capacity. Now that is static, so not moving. If you're driving around, the weight that it can carry is 220 pounds. So 800 pounds is important because if you're putting something like a rooftop tent, that'll probably weigh around 200 pounds, throw a couple people up there, that's probably another 300, 350. So it adds up quick. And to carry that weight, you're gonna need something like this. Now this one here is made of aluminum. The parts are really high-end quality. It doesn't add too much weight. And the whole thing works with an inner structure. So we actually have to drill into the hard top so that way we can tie the outer structure to the inner frame. Now the inner frame pretty much transfer the load to the body of the Jeep. Another reason why I went with this kit is because you pretty much get the full functionality of the hardtop. It'll come off the same way, putting the hardtop back on is the same. So that is great, that's super convenient and I love that. So if I ever wanna go back to a soft top, this whole thing comes off, the rails come with it and we're good to go. Now I was also looking for a Gobi system and that's more of like an exoskeleton roof rack. But the problem with that is in Canada, super hard to get those things. They cost a lot of money and they are a lot heavier. Uh, going on the trails, you have all you know the bars and everything hanging off the side. Not ideal, it, you could get hung up. Your Jeep is a lot wider then. So that's the reason why I went with these wings because you know they're pretty low profile. They're really easy to remove. You maintain the system with the hard top coming up on and off. These are all pluses for me and I really like that. Now they do offer a version that doesn't have these like rounded vortex bars and they're more square. I personally don't like that because they tend to cause a lot more wind noise. So these vortex bars, they do cut the wind, there's less drag, so I do prefer them. And my Thule system was like this and I didn't hear them at all. So I figure that this would be a safe bet and the way to go. These ones, they do stand off the hardtop a little bit. And that is only because I went with the kit that has the locks. If you go with the ones that just bolt on to the Rhino Rack, it's a lot lower. Now this isn't really a problem for me because it does allow for a little more clearance if you are bolting something to the underneath or you know trying to attach something to these bars. It's a little more convenient. And I do like this locking feature. It makes taking these things off so simple. You literally just unlock it, there's a latch, you unclip it, and the whole thing comes off. And I like that because when these are attached to a rooftop tent, they could pretty much live with the rooftop tent by just unlocking them and removing them, and the whole thing can leave. Rhino Rack also provides a kit that includes the Pioneer Rack, which is kind of like a platform up top. And the reason why I didn't go with that is it costs a lot more and I didn't really see the benefit of having that. I plan to put a rooftop tent on this and it is a lot easier to strap it to these bars than the slats that are on the Pioneer system. So I, I do like the simplicity of this and it does cost a lot less. So that's why I went with this. Now, if you guys are interested in picking up this same system, I'm gonna leave a link below. So that way you guys go ahead and get this thing. And you know what, if you do decide to use that link, it does help the channel. I get a very small percentage and it doesn't come out of your pocket. It actually comes out of Amazon's pocket. So, you know, stealing from the rich, giving to the poor, let's do it. So I'm gonna walk you through this install. Uh, it is a little bit nerve wracking drilling into the hard top, but the instructions are super clear. And hopefully what I can provide to you is a little more instruction 
and confidence so that you can do this yourself. And to be honest, once I did it, it was no big deal because it is fiberglass in the end and you can patch it. It's, it's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and get this thing installed and show you what we gotta do. So to get started with the install of the Vortex bars with the backbone system, we need to make sure we have all the components here. And there are gonna be a few things that accompany the backbone. You're gonna need three Vortex bars, Vortex bar 1500. There are some quick mount fix kit rubber pieces. We have one set of five millimeter spacers and the RLT 600 quick mount leg set. And this one comes in a box of two sets. This one comes in a box of one set, and that's because we have three crossbars. Uh, if possible, try to get these matched up with the same keys. Unfortunately, my two sets aren't matching, so I'm gonna try to sort that out later on. But if you can order it with the matching, that's probably ideal. The backbone kit is pretty nicely laid out. I have to uh, admire this packaging. Everything is pretty visible, packed really well. So that's super helpful for keeping things organized and I do appreciate that, so that's awesome. Although we do have to drill into the Jeep to do this install, it does look pretty straightforward and not too intimidating at all. There are templates and everything we're gonna need to make sure we do that accurately. There's one bit of a strange tool that you may or may not have and that's a step bit. So you're gonna need a 16 millimeter, 18 millimeter. Uh, typically that's in one bit. So you can get both sizes of step in that one bit. So go search for one of those before, you know, laying everything out and getting ready to do the install because you're gonna need to drill that hole. So before taking the hard top off of the Jeep, we're gonna do a bit of prep. I wanna build up the backbone system that goes inside the hard top. And that's pretty much the core that's gonna take a lot of the weight, the load capacity and uh, transfer it to the Jeep. So that's gonna be our first step. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pre-install some foam gaskets. And that's gonna pretty much waterproof the whole thing and keep water from entering the Jeep. So those are gonna to have to go on a lot of the bracketry here. So we're gonna get that all out of the way, all laid out and ready to go. So that way when we have to take the hard top off and put everything together, it's all ready to go. And I do apologize, I'm outside in the front yard. So there might be some weird noises going on. People might be mowing their grass, but hey, whatever. It's all good. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get to it. Oh, and uh, yeah, this is definitely gonna require a few beverages. So find your local brewery and you know, probably get a 12 pack. I'm gonna start with the left hand, or sorry, the passenger side. So you're gonna need one of these brackets with the Rhino Rack logo on it. And this one actually is labeled on here RH for a right hand. You're gonna need two upper braces and this has LH that's gonna go on the left side, RH that's gonna go on the right side, and then two brackets that go up on top. And again, they're gonna be LH, RH, and they go to the appropriate vertical braces. So match those guys up. And we're gonna get our pack of hardware. We have another scooter behind me, I bet we do. We got two scooters behind me. We should count how many scooters go by during this install. Anyways, hardware pack. It also comes with the Allen wrench so we don't have to fumble around looking for ours. It's all ready to go. So on the bottom here, we're gonna take one of our M8 nuts we're gonna get a lock washer on there and then a normal washer and then we're gonna take our vertical brace line it up and get them started keep that finger tight for now probably get a final tightening once we're in the hard top same thing on the other side And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my left hand bracket, stick it on the left hand vertical, get a washer on there and a lock nut. Do the same with the right bracket. 
And this, my friends, is a 13 mil. So let's uh, just snug that up a bit. And we're gonna do the final tightening when it's on the Jeep, because this does have a bit of adjustment. All right, so when you're done getting this brace set up, you're gonna wanna do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Get these guys prepped, and then we can move on to the next step. And when you're done, it should look something like this. Next up, we're gonna install a little bit of foam isolation pads that go in the inside of these brackets. And what that's gonna do is prevent these from leaking because we're drilling into our hardtop. Uh, so I've just taken a set. There are six of these. So I've just taken one of each component and you're gonna need the little foam stickers and we're gonna install them right now. So let's start with this guy here. And then we're gonna take this lovely piece and stick it on. Just like that. Next up, we got this flat one. We're gonna take two of the smaller stickers and they're gonna go on these inside pieces. Boom. Boom. And then we've got these longer ones. And it's gonna go along the top edge. Just like that. Next up we got this chunky bad boy. And we're gonna put two more of the round ones right here. Then we got a bigger round one and that goes on the center here. And we've got this one here. And that's gonna stick along this edge. And then we've got this square little guy, as you can see. And that's gonna go on this last hole here. Next up, you're gonna wanna find these plates and we're gonna get these rectangular foam pieces and stick them up on there. Just like that. And don't forget, we have a set of two of each of these, so go ahead and make sure to install all the foam on all the pieces. And then we can move on to taking the hard top off and drilling some holes. All right, next step is gonna be to take the hard top off as you normally would. He's pretty naked back there. So get this thing on a pretty decent surface. Grab yourself another beer and get yourself your drill because you're going to need it. It's time to put some holes in this thing. Don't be scared. All right, so I'm going to start the back corner. This is the driver's side and we're going to take our bracket here that we've already prepped with our foam and we're gonna place it right on this corner. Now, a couple things we wanna watch for. This channel here, it's gonna line up with this edge. So we wanna make sure that's gonna be just above the channel. And then we're gonna get it close to the back, but don't worry about the contour of this rear piece because it's gonna kind of taper inward towards the body. It's not gonna follow it completely. So we're just gonna lay this on top get that line where it's supposed to be and watch this back corner make sure that's kind of in line with the body once we're happy with that we're going to take a marker we've got a silver one here we're going to mark these holes because this is where we're going to drill don't worry about the top for now we're going to handle that later okay next we're moving to the middle of the hard top and we've got this piece right here and it's gonna sit up against 
our rain gutter. And again, you want to make sure it's just above that line, flat on the top, and it should pretty much just get itself in the right spot there. This one's really easy. Mark our holes. And again, we're mirroring this on the other side. Now dealing with the front holes, we've got this very scientific nifty template here. And you wanna go ahead and cut the bottom here or fold it where it says, you know, there's a line here. So let's go ahead and do that first. And now that section that we just cut off, that's the front of the vehicle. And we've got labels for the gutter, the rear, and the other side, which is the other gutter, because we're using this template actually on both sides. So when you're lining this gutter with the actual rain gutter, we're focusing on these holes here, the ones closest to the gutter. Um, so you're gonna wanna line that up, stick it in there. Front will line up with the end of the hard top here before the gasket, and then you can mark these two holes. So let's go ahead and do that. Stick that in there. Make sure it's nice and straight. We're right up to the edge here at the front. Now we're just marking. And then we're gonna repeat the process on the other side using these two holes. The moment we've all been waiting for. It's time to drill all these holes. And we're gonna first start off with a 1 8 bit. And like I said, every single one of these holes is getting drilled with this guy. It's pretty much just a pilot hole at this point. So let's get to it. Now we're gonna step it up to a quarter inch bit and the holes in the middle and the holes in the rear are getting this guy. Okay, now moving along to the front, we're stepping up to this chunky boy. We're using a step bit and the outer side of the hard top is getting 18 millimeters, whereas the inside is getting 16. So I'm gonna start with the top and then do the bottom. Now we can focus our attention to the inside of the hard top. And what we need to do is take this inner brace that we built before and we're gonna set it in place and there's a few tabs here on the hard top it's going to slide over that and then we can adjust the brackets to match up with the holes that we just drilled and on the outside we're going to use flush screws on each of the two rear brackets and then we can also use the allen key that came with the kit on the inside we're using a washer and lock nut for every single one of them so you're going to want to get those started and then snug them down before snugging down the hardware on the brackets. Once we get this all done and snugged up, move on to the other side, do the exact same thing. All right, so now that we have all of our nice cast bracketry secured to the hard top, we're bringing out the drill again. This is again the quarter inch bit and we're just gonna drill out this last hole here. Okay, so your kit should have one of these bolts and it should have come with two really small O-rings. So you're gonna slide that on, feed it through the hole. And on the inside, we're gonna use a washer and our nylock nut and fasten that down. And next up, we're gonna turn our attention to the front of the Jeep, front of the hard top. And we're gonna grab this plate that we prepared earlier is going to slide into those giant holes we drilled. And then we're going to grab our next hardware bag. And from the bottom, we're going to install this plate. It's going to take a lock washer and a washer. And we're going to fasten that down. And we get to use our provided Allen key. 
Cool, so now we've got the back one all set up and we can finally turn our attention to installing the vortex bars that we're gonna attach to all these awesome reinforced pieces we just installed. So we can open up our uh, quick mount leg set and find this piece of plastic and we're gonna find our rubber base pieces and we're gonna marry the two. This will then sit right in place of our backbone structure. Again, the kit comes with its own hardware. So you're gonna wanna open that up and it comes also with its own Allen key. And this one actually is a special one because it's got a hole in the middle because our hardware actually has like a pin in it and you can't use a traditional key on it. So there's a bit of a little safety factor there. For each one of these brackets, we're gonna need our nut, a lock washer, and of course, just the regular washer. So get those things sandwiched together, drop them in the center hole, and we can fasten them down to the backbone. And let's keep this thing pretty straight, right? That's nice and tight. We're gonna do the same thing to all six of them. Okay, now with these horn pieces in place, we can now turn our attention to these pieces here. And what you wanna do is get your keys and open them up. This is gonna give you access to the bolt underneath. We're just gonna loosen that up a bit because this square nut up here is what's gonna slide into the vortex crossbar. So we just wanna give that some room so that we can uh, play with it later. And you can kind of see now how this locking piece works. If you push them in and then kind of hook it towards the middle, it'll just slide in like that. And then what you can do is pull it back out and now it's locked in place and part of the rack. And let's say you were done with your crossbars. You didn't need them for the season. You pop them off like that. And then we get these caps that we can actually just drop in and have a clean look. Or you can take the whole piece off, it's up to you. It's only one little uh, bolt there. So that's the next step. Let's loosen these guys up and attach them down. Okay, so now I wanna turn our attention to the rear of the Jeep. Um, for whatever reason, we need to install that spacer kit. Um, and what that's gonna do is I guess bring the bar up on the back just slightly and it's probably because the back piece is probably down by five millimeters so we're gonna have to remove this hardware and fit the spacer between that and the spacer does come with additional bolts because they are longer so we're gonna swap that in taking out our old bolt swapping in the new hardware slide it up in there Get our spacer on, and then again, this bad boy. Do that on both sides. So now we got all the legs installed, which is great. We can move our attention to these vortex bars. So let's open one up, let's see what we're dealing with here. So these are a nice aluminum piece. Well, we're gonna have to open them up. The end caps come off, and there's a bit of plastic hardware uh, and some accessories that we're gonna need to fit these on. Let's take a look at what's inside here. So let's pop the cap off. So we got some plastic spacers and these are almost like a measurement guide and they're gonna go underneath. They're gonna, they're just like a plastic filler. And to be honest here, I went through my inventory of all the pieces before starting this video. And I was a little annoyed that uh, I was missing the rubber that goes along the top until I started doing this install. And I realized that it wasn't with the rest of the plastic, it's actually in these side holes. So if you're missing yours, look in these. You might need to wiggle them out. Look at them, there they are. So those are important because we're gonna snap them onto the top of the rails. Should be four of them. So look for four of them. Flipping it around. I'm gonna pop this cap off. We're gonna have to pop them both ends open. 
Okay, we're gonna find this blue thing. And this is actually a key. So on this cap here, you're gonna see we got this weird piece. Yeah, it spins it. So that way when we're done, we can lock all the ends and we don't have to worry about losing them on the trail. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be the same for every Vortex bar. So go ahead, get all your pieces out and let's slide them on our feet. All right, let's get this Vortex bar on the foot here. You can see it kind of pivots. Um, it's also a logo on the Vortex bar. So depending on what side you want it, I think I'm gonna keep mine facing forward, which means the logo is gonna be on the passenger side. And we got the square nut here and it's gonna pretty much slide into this space here. So we loosen this thing, push it up, slide it inside and let's bring it all the way over. So that way we have room to fit our other end. Like I said earlier, those bottom filler strips have measurement guides on them. So if you stick them on both ends, it'll give you a good reference of, you know, if this thing's sitting centered. So I ended up getting my front rails on 53 millimeters of gap right here. So I'm happy with that, it's centered. Now I can go ahead and snug down the nuts. Cool, so now I've got the bars all centered up and looking good. What we can do now is take out these measurement pieces and trim them because they're actually gonna act as fillers for underneath the bars on both the outside and on the inside of the bar. So let's uh, get these things back in, mark them and trim them. Next up, we're gonna take our rubber strips and we're gonna push them into the channel on the top. I find that pushing it from both ends, both sides, allows it to seat a lot easier. If anyone's got a tip on how to install this, I'd greatly appreciate it because my fingers uh, are getting sore here. Once you get to the end, you're probably gonna have to trim it. So go ahead and do that, all three rails. Okay, now that we have all the filler plates on and the rubber on top, we can go ahead, put our end caps on. We got our blue key here. Stick that in, turn it a quarter turn. Caps locked in there. We can then take our keys, lock the base down. And I actually just wanna show you how easy it is to remove these things. Take our covers off, push in our red tabs, and then lift. So what I like about that is, say you have a rooftop tent on here, and that's the only reason why you have these, these uh, bars. You could have them installed on the rooftop tent and leave it that way. So when you're done with the tent, unlock the bars and it goes with the tent. So we're pretty much done working on the hard top. Now we're gonna turn our attention to the actual Jeep. We're gonna have to unzip this padding and then with that out of the way, we're gonna install this bracket. It's gonna take a lot of the weight and transfer it onto the roll bar. So let's get our 13 millimeter socket. Let me show you where these bolts are. Okay, so climbing up onto the Jeep, we're just gonna undo that Velcro. And then right in here, we're gonna find ourselves with a zipper. Strip that back. And then we're gonna peel back the padding. So the bolts that we're gonna focus on are actually right here on the side. And we've got two on the top. And these are gonna be 13 mil. Let's get our socket out and take those out and then we'll install the bracket in place. 
So here you can see it with the bracket in place. Snug up our bolts. And now we can zip up our padding. Let it also up. And with that done, we can now move to the other side. The exact same thing. Huh? Next step, put the hard top back on and it goes on the exact same way that you remember doing it from factory. So go ahead and do that. And then we've got these little foam pads that go on the inside just so no one hits their head. Thanks again for tuning in to this episode of RoofCon Unlimited. I'm super excited about this roof rack because the next thing we're probably gonna install is the rooftop tent. And I hope you guys will subscribe, come along for the journey because I can't wait to show you what tent I'm going with. So we'll see you next time.